Hello, everyone, and welcome to a uh, wonderful special edition of the Sunday Live Sessions. Uh, so it's Sunday morning in uh, beautiful Long Beach, California, but I'm not in beautiful Long Beach, California. Uh, I'm actually on special assignment in uh, on the other coast in town in North Carolina, a buddy of mine, Sean. It's a grand entrance. Which way does he go? Is he still in one? No. Nice little Coco entrance from Sean Burke. Ah, so I'm here with Sean Burke. We're catching up after, geez, five years not seeing each other. Six. Not long enough. Six. I went, uh, last time we saw each other, I was in California. Oh, I yeah. was at a job interview. I was in a suit. You were? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Yeah, and then you drove me to the airport, and then you <laughs> hit me up last minute. Oh, can you pick me up at the airport? Late late at night i'm sorry no, i got in late we <laughs> he took me out for dinner i made him stay up drinking whiskey it was great good times exactly. <laughs> uh so we are out at sean's favorite spot this is uh, a legendary freestyle battleground here we're gonna teach some some truck transfers this magical human has the secrets all the secrets he was just sharing with me actually about how to do truck transfers pogos all kinds of truck tricks so we're gonna start with those Maybe go into some uh, some other requests from viewers, but I don't know. You want to start with some warm ups and just kind of yeah. bang some stuff out real quick. See what we can do. I am cold again. I just spent a good ten minutes trying to get the stream up and running. I'm returning customer service emails. Shouts out to all people who were just emailing me. I understand your frustration. <laughs> Whatever customer service stuff I can say right now. Already warmed up, right? Yeah. Sean's good. He doesn't need any warm up. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Not warmed up enough. Not warmed up enough. I always do footwork. Y'all already know this. Back that up. 
trying to shove it. Oh, man. All right, just so everyone knows, Mike's uh, slide comment was, uh, it's really rough right where we're trying to skate. And uh, that's because there's a lot of pogo marks in there. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's really just that. You just see where you just annihilated this ground from pogos. It's so funny. It's so good. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to come up with excuses why I can't do tricks. Oh. Uh. Is that Everybody. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Jay Waters, uh, you guys look like beaming the cube together. What's that? Uh, let's see. No machine guns here. Um, Sean is too good. He really is. It's, uh, it's unnatural. Doesn't make sense. Um, nice hang 10 and footwork. Came at a good time. Yes, you did. Um, did I just see Sean Burke do footwork? Is it April Fool's Day? See, everybody's loving it. You got to do more footwork, man. Oh, man. <laughs> we like it. Coleman, uh, can we see Sean do an ollie double heel flip? Can we? Yeah. I'm out of the way. Get that crotch shot out of the way. Yeah, so, you're good from the lines. Okay. We got good, uh, good frame. What do you got? Double heel. He warmed up with that today. That was like your... Give me your board, Mike. So tiny. Thing out of here. All right, this is the Waltz. What is By comparison. The, the size comparison here. It's hard to see on video, but I think it's tiny. This is the Destination 8-inch. Uh, really loose trucks here, but that was all right. Oh, man. I haven't skated a board this fall since bad freestyle skateboarding came out, I think. Well, that was probably smaller than this. Who well, makes good stuff, man? Who do y'all think? Small boards or big boards? What are we, what are we fans of here in the chat? Someone likes double flips, so that's good. First try? Oh, yeah, almost first try. First try on the other board. Yeah. Um, Pogas are CGI. They're not CGI. We're going to teach you them today so you can do them and to prove that they're not CGI. Uh, okay, starting out. Pogos. Pogos. No handed pogos? You want to start with those? That's the only type of pogo I can do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Weird. I What's your, what's your, like, number one starting, like, tip for pogos? Like, if you're going in from, you know, absolute zero, okay. what are you focusing on? Getting the nose stop? Well, just standing on the truck, whatever foot feels more comfortable on the truck, and you can hold it the longest. That's how oh. I learned to put my right foot or my back foot on the truck. So you would test, like, kind of just standing like yes. this? With the board up against your, yeah. your shin and just trying to balance. Stand. Now, what part of your foot is on the truck? All right, so a lot of mistakes I see, and I, I think Mike does this, <laughs> balls of the foot are on the base plate. My arch is right there. Your arch? Yeah. I, I'm locked and loaded right there. Wow. Okay. I, I do the ball on my foot on the base plate. Yeah. So 
when you say base plate, you're talking about kind of like the section here, like the, the big square section of your truck's base and, and also the yoke of the truck, right? Yeah. This section. So kind of this, this little sweet spot here. This little sweet spot here is where your foot is on. So you like to have your arch there. Yeah. So you start by just setting your foot. Maybe you start with your back foot. Yeah. So you test and see how long it can balance. Back it up on the frame. And then you will do it with your left foot and see if that works. Yeah. Oh, that's really awkward for me. Yeah. So, so right now you know that it's it feels more comfortable on one foot versus the other. Yeah. Now, what if both feet feel equally uncomfortable? Would you say revert to your back foot? Okay. Then I would say, what is your more dominant hand? Ah, more dominant hand. Okay. And what feels more comfortable going from tail or no stop into okay. it? So for me, my right foot felt more comfortable on the truck. I'm right-handed, so my right hand's more dominant. And that just made sense. And that's the case for me too. I'm, I'm right-handed and I'm back foot dominant, right foot dominant. Yeah. So. Cool. So, so that works out. Now what? Are you, are you thinking about how you hop? Are you thinking about getting into it? What do you like to practice so, or worry about? I learned them um, going at a tail stop straight into pogo. Okay. But I learned from Tommy Harbor there's an easier way to practice that. <laughs> Tommy said it's an easier way to practice that? Yeah. What? <laughs> Be because you, you're not trying to get your hands involved. Okay. You can easily watch and you can jump perfectly on the truck. Okay. That's for sure. I did not learn it that way. I'm going to say that. I, I learned just actually standing on it and okay. trying to essentially pinch my feet together. So I'm thinking about like if there was a magnet on the inside of my shoes, like a magnet on both sides, and they were forced together, like sandwiched together, trying to pinch that board between my feet so that I can't go anywhere. And then I'm doing small hops. But that's all I started doing was just very small hops in that position. I think, I don't know where my, my front foot's at. Yeah. My front foot's a little higher. Oh, it's higher. Yeah. Like here? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you just don't want to have your foot like on the ground when you're doing it, right? Yeah, absolutely not. The worst thing is when you see people doing like, or one of these, having it flat footed Ooh. on the grip. How do you even do that? It's like tree stands. I've seen a lot of people do that, but they try to muscle it and pinch the board. No. And once you start hopping, you, you're gonna lose it. No, thank you. Cool. Um, you wear shin guards? No. I wrap my knees though. You wrap your knees? Yeah. Okay. So, just a uh, bandage. So, the kingpin or the hanger does not, uh, you know, break my 30 year old knees. <laughs> I, I would recommend if you're new to this and you have never done pogo before, uh, if you notice that pain in your shin, in your, uh, your ankle, when you're doing this or in your knee, uh, get a shin guard. Now, I also recommend doing this on a freestyle board for a couple of reasons. Okay. So I am a lot shorter than Mike is. Yeah. So my wheelbase, the distance between trucks, is a little bit shorter on my board. Here's my knee. It's a little bit lower. And there's the truck. <laughs> an eight inch. Here's my knee. There's the truck. It's just on the just on the lower knee to me. Yeah. Where if I were to have to squat. I'm gonna hit bash my knee right to the hanger there. That sucks. So I'm going to avoid something with a longer wheelbase like this. Which brings us to freestyle boards, right? So that is a longer, larger freestyle board, the one that I'm riding. Uh, it's an example of like a kind of transitional or like hybrid freestyle board. What Sean has is a more traditional freestyle board. It's a bit shorter. Like he said, it has a shorter wheelbase. And for what he's talking about, it's ideal. So if you aren't already riding a freestyle board, if you're really into learning pogos and more traditional freestyle stuff, we definitely recommend picking up a freestyle shape and a shorter wheelbase uh, to get on these tricks. Um, 
along with that, having a shin guard um, is going to make them much more comfortable and make that pain easier to deal with. Also, skid plates. Yeah. I'm talking about yeah. skid plates. Definitely. So, skid plates, most of you are aware of these plastic things. Could be wood, could be a mystery material like <laughs> what mine are that I took from work. Experimental. Um, but the main thing is it, uh, it gives you a little bit more surface area when you're in pogo Love it. and if you have proper skid placement the wood itself will kind of mushroom over that skid and that'll be a rougher area for you to balance on your pogos yeah it also keeps it intact right like if you've ever had razor tail um where like you wear out your your nose your tail of the board uh and it gets to like a really sharp point uh, as soon as you start pogoing on that kind of a board uh, with razor tail, you'll chip your board like crazy. But skid plates prevent razor tail, and like Sean was saying, uh, it kind of mushrooms over. The, the deck kind of uh, kind of starts to soften. Yeah. Kind of works with the skid plate, but it never really chips the same way, and it just makes the board last longer. Last thing you want is to like just barely start learning pogos and then have your board just chip away and go to nothing. You want to make your board last longer and keep you on it learning tricks. Absolutely. Right. And uh, if you order a board from Mike, you can put those skid plates on. As long as you have boards in stock, we will do that. Oh, that's always the problem. But yeah. I don't know. Hopefully that covered some things. I feel like that's a good start, right? Yeah. Pogos yeah. are weird. Yeah. They're fun. If you just have a tripod and a stationary camera, that's the best thing to film. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love got single kicks. Get into like a pogo groove. Learn a bunch of structure and tricks. You said carousel earlier. Somebody asked me to carousel first try. I wonder if I can do one first try. Probably not. Nope. No, playing the foot down, Mike. I know. I'm, I'm that guy. Knee to the chest. Knee to the chest. It's my thumb. Okay. Better. Eh, right. Tolerable. Betty. Tolerable. I'll take that. Ugly Betty? Let's see it. Oh. Ooh. Come on, Arm bang? We're just going to go pull out all of Mike's truck transfers in one day. Yeah. Thumbbreaker. Here we go. Woo! What are we saying? That was a shot. It went. All right. No foot down. I don't care what you say. That's a good one. All right, so someone said, uh, I tried using a baseball slider instead of a brace. I feel it has a better flex than a shin guard and decent protection. That's smart. I've never seen a baseball slider before, but I get what that like, would do. It's on the outside of your leg usually, right? I, I'm trying to picture it. I, I've been so removed from, from sports. Team sports. Team sports, man. We love it when there's crossover. Right? Go, yeah. Do we? I don't know. Uh, let's see, that's a good idea. Well, I'm always up for suggestions. I know some people use um, there's like uh, BMX shin guards. That's what the Smith scabs yeah. were, right? Uh, well, I mean, it, it's always a uh, a trade off of protection versus flexibility. Yeah. Remember getting like the Smith scabs and just being sweaty as heck because they were like inflexible yes. and thick. Yeah. I remember like coming home and it was neoprene, nasty. so it didn't breathe at all. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's see. Hey, is the City Cats deck ever coming back, uh, or are they gone forever? Gone for good. Done for good. Uh, I think they're, uh, they're gone. Definitely gone. Sorry, guys. Uh, so. Let's see. What's up? There's a couple of used ones in my garage. There you go. Resale. Resale market for eBay. Hype boards. Let's get it. StockX. 
freestyle decks. Um, it's like compression sleeves with padding. Oh, cool. Yeah, we should totally try those. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I say go for it. The Walls website is looking bleak. Uh, Got to get things back in stock. You're telling me. Thanks for the update. Uh, <laughs> we're working on it. Might be why I'm in North Carolina. Hmm. Do, you, do you want to go over supply chain? Because I, I can ignore <laughs> everyone with that. Yeah, let them know. <laughs> no, we're, we're working on it. Definitely a tough time for all of those things, but we are working on it. Unprecedented times. Unprecedented times, y'all. But we're all in this together. Oh, boy. What you got, John? Uh, I'm going to go get some water. But, oh, but what, uh, what should we go up I, you know... I want to talk about carousels, personally. I I love carousels. They're one of those tricks that I like. I think it was a dream trick for all of us in our generation when we first got into skating because truck transfers were scary. It yeah. seemed like only a couple people were doing them in contest runs, and then if you could do them in a video part, you were, you know, you were oh, the yeah. man. So that was what 2008, 2007, when that was a thing. Carousel hype. Yeah, 07, 08. So Carousel is an end-over-end -end truck transfer. You start here. I start with my back foot on the truck, my back hand on the truck, and I throw it across my body and land in a switch-footed pogo, I guess, which is through truck stand. Well, I, I say it goes from the inside of the foot thrown over to the outside of the same foot. Yes. Now, this isn't necessarily the easiest truck transfer trick. No, it, it's... Uh, Mainly the first truck transfer trick everyone learns, and learning other truck transfers, that is not the easiest. It's one of the hardest, and because a lot of people will go into tail stop and do this, and start to spin and throw their shoulder around. And then the other reason is you're throwing this arm over, your shoulders being thrown out and your balance is to one side versus the other. So it's hard to stay sort of like centered and not rotating over the board as it's, as it's rotating. Yeah. Interesting. I struggled with this trick. It took me like weeks oh, yeah. of just like doing that, right? All day. Like I'm in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, just trying that. And I think eventually I worked up to doing the cross body throw with the top, kind yeah. of like hops and switched feet. Is that how you learned it as well? Um, or did you I, just go for it? I tried to, and then I just decided just to go for it. Let's just muscle it out and just go until I'm broken. That's so sick. I uh, I commend that effort. That's And I think wow. w one of the hard habits for me to break was I learned impossibles before carousels. Mm. So I was so used to driving the board with my foot. So trying to do that type of sweep while throwing the carousel at first and that never works out. You just end up kicking the board somewhere. Yeah, it's more of a lift, right? Yeah. You have to lift your foot to carry it. I can just show you, right? So, I get in the middle here. So what we're talking about, if you're new to the, uh, the chat here, a carousel. Man, I can't believe it. Move. I'm popping. Stalled it out just to make me feel bad. All right, I'll get you back. Ooh, all the way out here to see you. It shows me up on my board. <laughs> Thanks for the help, John. Yeah. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to keep that truck foot parallel with the ground at all times. You're lifting it slightly, and that's it. Yeah, so you're not scooping like over or across and if you manage to not keep that parallel with the ground point your toe down that board's going to go behind you if you point your toes up it's going to go in front of you whoa i never thought about that that's crazy so it goes okay so pointing your toe down and it goes behind you it, it aims yeah what yeah that's, that's so I'm here, weird everyone. Okay, so cross body motion with your arm and practicing just lifting your foot, right? Yep. Are you are you grabbing the nose, like kind of like under the skid, 
as you throw it, or are you just doing the paddle hand, like just using your fingers? Yeah, I, I'm straight paddle hand. So there's no grab, it's just your fingers throwing it across. Okay, let's, can I, I don't can know. Can you what, show us from, from this side? I don't know what, so. I can actually just pick up the camera yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two of us, why are we filming on a tripod? Come on, people. Pardon me as I uh, change camera settings here. Hi, you guys. So my face turns into a cat. Uh, I'm I'm not a cat. You seen that video? No. The guy at a Zoom meeting and his. Uh, oh yeah. I'll show you later. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna be angled that way. Yes. So I'm just gonna go into no-handed pogo, so you can see the hand placement beforehand. So your thumb is gripping underneath the skid plate as you throw it. It's it's a placeholder. Okay. So it, it's mostly the top part of the thumb. It's pinched, and it's not actually the thumb holding it. Okay. So thumb's kind of just hanging there. Interesting. Interesting. We love to see it. Okay, so people are asking... Uh, I feel like Sean stays up uh, most nights thinking about technicalities of truck transfers. Is that true? No. <laughs> Sleeps very well. Does not stay up thinking about truck transfers. Don't need to. Don't, you already know him. First truck. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, any other, let's see, any other truck transfers you recommend be trying before carousels? Okay. What do you think? We talked about this before we went live. And I don't agree with this 100%, but... I respect your expertise. It is sidewinders. So going back to what we talked about previously, what foot are you more comfortable on in a pogo? Mm -hmm. You're going to go from inner of your less dominant foot thrown over into the inner of the more comfortable foot you are in pogo. So it's a sidewinder. Yes. Sidewinder. But the main thing is... Your shoulders are squared up with your feet, and you're right above your board. You can see it the entire rotation. And you have to kind of alley-oop the throw, right? Yeah. So how, how are you how are you doing that throw? How are you getting the board to kind of flip that way? It's shoulder, pec, muscle, all Wait. in the chest. And you're pulling it up and then pulling throwing it, it down. Yeah. So it's very similar to starting a lawnmower and pretty much that motion. Okay. And you're doing it there. If you ever tried to start a lawnmower and you were just trying to do it with your arms, your elbows could start hurting you. Right. And just, that's exactly what would happen if you try to muscle it with your arms. Which is what happens to me when I do yeah. sidewinders. Did you learn sidewinder to Casper first? No. Really? Yeah, I just did straight sidewinder. Can you, can you show us the truck sidewinder, please? You learned that before you learned Casper Sidewinders. Can you show us a Casper Sidewinder? I feel like the monkey grinder right now, but I promise. No, it's I, I can't scary. do those. No way. So from here and then thrown to Casper? No, just like a, a walkover one, like a step over. Like not oh, thrown. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Like Pear Wellander style. Okay. No, I, I learned those maybe like two or three years ago. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because I start right foot on the truck. Oh, so it's your opposite. Yeah. Whoa. So I, I just never, I never really liked them because I never could get that timing properly. But what Mike's talking about, a handed sidewinder. So. Yeah, because to me, that's like the, the prerequisite for a truck sidewinder in my brain. But no? No. Okay. <laughs> that looks lame. Truck to truck looks awesome. You're a fascinating human being. Yeah. I wish I could do thrown sidewinders that easily. I just don't get it, man. And then the next one would be windmills. Oh, can we talk about those? Dude, okay. This was a trick that, like, I, was Callum Bourne doing them back in, like, the like early 2000s? And that was, like, a huge deal. Remember Callum? He did them handed. Hand, handed to no-handed? No, handed to handed. No, really? Yeah. Did did Renna do them no-handed? Renna did them no-handed. Okay, all the freestyle nerds in the chat, you know what we're talking about. If you don't know, Keith Renna was Keith Renna's the guy. 
he was the guy. Now Sean's the guy. Sorry, Keith. But we, I was obsessed with Keith. Yeah. So Keith, what what a side or windmill is? It's a vertical shove it. Okay. Truck to truck. It's so cool. So Keith Renna, all of his truck transfers, all of his flips, he'd throw them in front of. No himself. way. And all of mine, I throw them back. That's got to be so much harder to throw it in front. In front. Yeah. Because you're like leaping forward almost. Yeah. You're leaning forward with it. You're, you're leaning forward. Your hips are back, and then you're trying to overcorrect. <laughs> That's a strange motion. Yeah. It's like whoa. So, Dear. Keith didn't do it right. <laughs> It's only one correct way to do a trick, everybody. That's what we're trying to get to. Just kidding. Oh, man. It is a monster of a trick. Make sure you get Sean's car in frame. Yes. Should we do a car tour after this? I did get a new license plate on it. Sick. It's all definitely in frame. Yes, dude. All right, so that's a windmill. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Thank you for doing that for us, for showing everybody. Um, what's next? Uh, you wanna you wanna switch over and take the camera? Yeah. Talk about renegades or something? Yeah. Um, so I think we were talking about renegades. Well, we we're talking about Rena, right? Yep. That's not really Renna trick, but Renna adjacent. Well, Renna's notorious for calling everything Renegade, whatever renegade trick it is. Sidewinder, Renegade. Yeah. Something. I thought it was a Tommy trick, though. No, I don't think so. So, the Renegade traditionally is a kind of like a carousel. It starts like a carousel. However, you give it an extra little flip, half flip, and land on the board. Right? Yeah. I guess there's an extra rotation, extra like half rotation. So it's an over rotated carousel. Now I learned them that way and then figured out how to do a carousel with an extra flip, which is what I usually am doing on camera. I'll try to do like a traditional running um, So you're going to set up just like a carousel, hop on that truck, and over flip it. Let's do a I'll double flip real quick. Yeah. Just, I don't know, makes more sense for me than the extra flip. So um, it works kind of like a 360 flip. If you've seen me or anybody else, I know Danimal does these a lot, do the tail stop 360 finger flip. It's actually very similar to that motion. So you can try that standing in tail stops, grabbing the nose at sort of a I don't know, two o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, right about there. I like to have my thumb spread out pretty far, kind of like on the other side of the nose. You kind of do a push and pull. So you're scooping underneath the board as you pull it back with your hand. So you get one down. Whoa. You'll land something for a try today, I promise. There we go. So that's sort of like the, the thing I learned first that made Renegade flip a lot easier. And then from there, started playing around with just the way I had to flip with my foot on the ground. So I did those. It's been a few years since I've done one. Show you. I can show them how you do it. Um, no, no, I, I, I haven't done it, and I don't think I can land it. But my problem was... Once it leveled out, it had a tendency of just shooting out. Oh. You never have that problem. Um, shooting out forward, right? Yeah. In the forward direction? No, if anything, I would bounce them. They would either, like, bounce before they reached the full rotation, or I would under-rotate them. Oh. oh, like that. Yeah. Oh, you're leaning back too much. You're, you're dipping your right shoulder too much. <laughs> How's it feel? <laughs> oh, I, I could have done a 360. Yeah, you got that. Do you have 360 carousels here? No. Oh, man. That trick is such... 
to uh, oh. Renegade Sidewinder. Oh, man. That trick is unreal to me. That flip. But, but no, the Renegade flips out. I'd always it's an catch awkward it like one. That and it would just shoot out. Yeah, I feel like I may have switched over to larger boards at that point. I think I was on like a pair of kangaroo, and then I probably upgraded to like something larger from small school yeah. at that point. So I think that helped. Like I was on a longer wheelbase. But I don't know. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to give the board credit for landing them. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got their tricks they're good at. Of course. Yeah. Mine's clearly footwork. I, <laughs> and mine is clearly sidewinders. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, I think if you're over rotating, one thing to try to do um, would be to avoid dipping your shoulder. Keep your shoulders square and try to like have them level with the ground majority of the time. Um, it'll prevent you from kind of banana peeling, right? So we call it if you're like shooting out like that. Um, aside from that, try to just keep your knees up, knee yourself in the chest if you can, really suck your feet up in the air. And that will, uh, that will avoid, I mean, any kind of mishaps with the board. But yeah, definitely work on your 360 finger books first. I know, uh, Jacob, you said that you just got those. Once you've got, uh, those really cleaned up and consistent and start playing around with just the single uh, half rotation, I guess it is. Trying to get, but do a couple more of those real quick. Those. Cross foot, maybe. Let's see. Ooh. See? My shoulders. Yep. Dip the shoulder, lost it. Well, that's how mine look normally. They just shoot out like that. Should I try a sidewinder now? Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember how I do it. Like, I think I go that, right? No, you gotta, no. What are you more comfortable throwing with? Your right Dude, hand? You're killing me. My right hand. Well, my right hand, but I'm more comfortable catching with my right hand. Yeah, but if you go inner left to inner right, try that. Just try it for me. Inner left to inner right? Yeah. I can't. This foot doesn't jump. <laughs> I, I don't think I can even get in the truck this way. Wow. I really, I have to do this. Yeah. Okay, hold on. And I'm going to jump to the same foot? No, no, you're jumping to your other foot. To my right foot. Yeah. Whoa. That's so strange. You... Timing just doesn't work for me. No, you got it. You got it. That, that was that pretty close. I, okay. I, I see it now. That's so strange. So I would usually do it this way. But I can see what you're saying with my less dominant hand. Yeah. My arm having a harder time getting the Yeah. Throw. And I'm leading with the elbow still, like you said. Hmm. I don't know if this is a battle I want to have here. <laughs> but I'm excited about this kind of playing around with this opposite sided sidewinder. Oh, man. Those are still really fun. <laughs> Even though I'm terrible at them. Let's see. What's the chat saying? Um so Casper 360 flip. Can you Casper 360 flip? Hi. Um uh, let's see. Can you do Casper threes? I don't know what this is that I do. Oh, uh, it's just a yeah. double or under flip. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. No, that one's, yeah, that one's strange. It's a hard one. Uh, I always lay on the back or 
in front of my board when I when doing renegade flips. I assume I'm just learning, uh, leaning forward a bit too much. Yeah, I would say try to do more of the work with your your knees and less of the work with your back. Uh, try to jump high uh, and avoid kind of crouching uh, or hunching over during it. Uh, any tips for flops out of pogo? Flops out. Oh, like like just getting out of pogo. Uh, it's hard to say. So do you mean like um, flops like in the Stowe Strauss sense? Like when Stowe does his kind of bounces out or just dismounting? So you can talk about dismounting right quick, yeah, right? Yeah. How do you get out of pogos when you're doing them? Truck transfer. It's the only way. No way. How? Okay, how about when you first learn? Okay. Um, Give us that. Normally, I'm, there's no hand of pogos. So the no hand 50-50. Yeah, you could do truck that. Stand. It doesn't look good. Um, what about just like plopping out of it without any of that? Like that, you kind of. Yeah, do you have any tips for that one or anything you focus on when you're doing it? I, I drive my knee slightly into the board to make it fall. Interesting. So the the knee that's against the grip tape yeah. is what you're pressing. Interesting. Cool. Notice notice his arms too. So this is one trick that I, I taught uh, Ricky when I was at Braille. Uh, he was having trouble getting out of these and I had him aim his right arm to the right. See how Sean's arm kind of goes up? That also might help you. You kind of point in the direction you want to uh, fall. It's kind another, of a John Bunn trick, too. Another way I like is uh, some little pizzazz. It's maybe a, <laughs> a little bit more intermediate way. Boom. Oh, get your cameras out, kids. It's ready for Thrasher. If you want to take that to the next level, you may be able to hold it. <laughs> Let's get the shot. Ready? Boom. <laughs> I hope someone screenshot that. That was uh, that was a moment. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Yeah. So many ways, but I think that the easiest way would be just to flop out of it like you were doing, or kind of uh, dismount like that. Yeah. Or uh, I like that ah, way. Yes. I feel is the easiest. Yeah. So you grab it in front. You grab it fingers on the grip, thumb on the skid plate, and you just turn it down. The half flip, yeah. yeah. Kind of like snapping your fingers or like yeah. twisting the wrist. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, so we were talking about the flop. So it looks like Simple Saint was looking at the bouncing pogo dismounts. You ever try that? The ones where it actually bounces off the ground and I, half I flips. I never do them because I skated a single kick for so long. Oh, it didn't bounce the, the right way you wanted it to? Oh, man. Yeah. I've never even tried them, honestly. That's something that Stowe was unlocking, and I think Chris Castle kind of unlocked along with Yuzuki. And it's not something I really worked on. I think it looks cooler than the Casper bounce, though. Like bouncing it to Casper? It was an old skater that did a Casper, bounced it, caught it back. Oh, the dribbles. I love yeah. dribbles, man. That's all Tim Moore stuff. Oh, what? Did like, or Cameron Martin did it. Is it Tim no, Moore's Cameron Martin? that in 1986. I, okay. Agree to disagree. Man, I'm I'm a little upset, but that's that's okay. Moving on. <laughs> um, sorry, simple saying. I'll definitely have uh, or we'll definitely have another episode in the future. Where we talk about those. Uh, I'd love to bring Stowe on or Chris on to, to talk more about uh, flops. But yeah, I'll make a note or make make a note on your end as well. Uh, keep me accountable, so uh, we can get you that tip. What Let's see. else? What other tricks are we going after? Um, all right. Maria Mendoza's in. She sent the wrong emoji and then sent the right emoji. Hi, Maria. Uh, also the dean of the Freestyle Academy of Knowledge and Excellence, Maria. She's the dean? She's the dean. I'm the chancellor. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So, merch coming soon. Really? Maybe. I'll give you that, that vector. I think I have it on my, my hard drive okay. at the house. I'll give it to you. Well, potential. Potential. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, do you guys have any tips for learning kickflip? Freestyle kickflip or regular ollie kickflip? Which one? Um, you got any tips for freestyle kickflip? How about that? I can only do M80s. Really? Yeah, that's it. What's your tip for M80s? What's your take on that?
They're so nice. So when I'm doing M80s, I'm thinking about, well, obviously I'm trying to get the flip. I have to, you have to have your kick clips kind of wired, right? Freestyle kick clips where you're hooking the foot under. And I'm focusing on my chest and shoulders facing forward. That's like my main, you know, thing. Yeah. What about you? I'm, I'm more focused on foot placement. Okay. So I don't know if you were to look, if you were to place your feet next to each other, mm -hmm. I don't know if they're lined up toe to heels, but mine, it's almost like it's staggered. Yeah. It, the toes fit right into the arch. That. Yeah. I'm flat footed. Does that change? It just sounds like another excuse. <laughs> I'm full of those. So you're saying that your feet aren't necessarily totally even, but yeah. the back foot's kind of staggered, kind of set farther back yeah. towards the tail. Interesting. Interesting. And then the other thing is, like Mike said, I'm looking forward. But once I make that flip, because I'm driving the flip with my right foot, I naturally turn a little bit. But you're not totally turning yeah. 90 degrees. It's maybe 40, 45. And then you do the pivot back right because i think i think a lot of people have the tendency of with a freestyle kickflip turning fully in the direction of the flip right yes i i teach it that way i like to have people really twist into the kickflip you can't even do the kickflip you just have to do the m80 have to. that's so great um but if you keep your shoulders square kind of facing forward it's more natural kind of easier to pull the board back to uh, you know, regular stance or in that 180 degree rotation. Can you yeah. film one for me? Yeah. Kind of show one a bit better. So what I was saying before about kick lips. So with regular freestyle kick lips, I usually teach people to kind of hook and twist and land fakie, right? That's you And you're really twisting your shoulders a lot to, uh, to kind of help get that flip. Once you've got that dialed, you really have to have people dialed when you're, when you're trying to do these M80s. Try to focus on that. But you see that, like, because I'm not turning all the way to the left and then trying to turn all the way to the right, um, my shoulders kind of stay mostly pointed forward. I'm able to pull the board back much easier. Makes sense, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So if I try to do it with the full rotation in both directions, it's a lot harder. Ugh. I have no way to drive my hips back around. However, if my shoulders stay straight forward, it's easier to uh, kind of swivel my hips and pull the board back around. I don't know. That's my take on M80s, at least. Uh, there's more to it, but if you have the kick flip down, um, kind of focusing on your shoulders, I think, is the biggest game changer. And then you can land them in manual and ride them out. Yeah. You want to do that? It's been a while. Show and tell. Oh, uh, you could have done the spacewalk with spirit fingers. Oh, uh, what's the the rental line? <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> I got you. I got you back right here. POV. Ah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Serious work, y'all. Um, all right. So someone asked for one last tip for uh, Saran wraps. Any tips for saran wraps? That's that, right? Yeah. Okay. The last one before the uh, finale. So, I always learned um, in pogo or no-handed pogo, you want to grab the front of the nose Ooh. and bring it around. Okay. And so, you're, you're pulling the board away from your leg? Yes. Okay. I'm pulling it away, and if I were to grab the back or 
kind of reach around, Oof. your leg's going to get caught up in your arm. So you, you grab in front of your leg, grab pull the board out, and then thread your leg in front like that. Yeah. Now I noticed that you're letting go of the board as soon as your your leg is through the, the hole. Yeah. That's important, right? Yeah. Just, just kind of flopping it back over. Snaps back into place. So that's a saran wrap when you're hopping. When you're not hopping. Woo! So I was thinking handed to no-handed. Oh, for those. Interesting. So I can talk about that one if you want. Yeah. So I got my no-handed pogos. So that's more like a yo-yo thing. Or like, that's who the, I always thought it was as well. Um, you're talking about no-handed pogos, or sorry, handed pogos, and then threading it through no-handed, I think. Um, same idea, right? If you're thinking about how Sean's doing it, you're just starting from the handed position. And then when I'm ready to do the, the saran wrap, I'm really just taking this hand off, and we're in the same position Sean was in a second ago, right? Yeah. So then you just have to thread that foot through, let it snap back, and then bring your foot in to secure the board back into a no-handed pogo. So. If you want to do like several, uh, you can kind of do the, the back and forth, like pull the board out, and then as your foot gets in front of the board, once it's through that gap, try to secure the board with the other hand on the side, kind of back in a handed pogo position. Take the other hand off, let the foot rotate around more, and then kind of keep doing the switch. But uh, as long as you're hunched over and in that position, it's gonna be hard to balance. You also can't really hop. So you gotta move fast. Let's see, Let's see how many I can do. Ah. <laughs> Not exactly. Strong seat. Yeah, but if you want to just take it back to a no-handed pogo, really it's just about kicking that foot out and just letting the board snap back into position. You no-handed know, pogo, like Sean was saying. But move fast. Try to kick the foot fast, and then uh, the faster you do a trick the less likely some viewers get to notice you messed up. <laughs> exactly. Or judges. Hey, yeah. Judges won't notice. Yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, I'll have to do a, uh, a proper saran wrap YouTube video trick tip one day. Got to come back to that one. Yeah. It's easier on a single kick, too. Yours look good. Yeah, My they're all right. Track right now. But anyway, let's flip this around. Do a little... Someone said something about crossfit the pogos. Nope. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> That's the advice. Do not do crossfit the pogos. They're so weird, man. They're so hard. I'm not a big fan of crossfit the pogos, They're personally. Garbage. They're garbage. <laughs> There's nothing good that can come out of a crossfit the pogos. Absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. They're, uh, I mean, I kind of agree with that, but maybe not nothing. Because the impossible is out of crossfit the pogos are Pretty wild. I have tried to do a sidewinder outer. I remember that. With cross footed pogos and no handed. And it, it, it wasn't happening. No, I couldn't see that being very comfortable. Well, we, I think we covered a bit. It's almost about, it's about an hour. Still a good amount of people on here. Thanks everybody who's on here right now who uh, came in and said hi. Uh, Sean, thank you yeah. for being my friend for the last too long. 13, yeah. 14 years? Not counting forum days before Probably meeting like, each other? Probably like 16. 16 years? Yeah. Wow, we need to stop. We do this yeah. too much. We've been doing this for way too long. Uh, if you're new here, hope you have some new friends in the chat maybe, or you've at least learned something from us. Uh, we'll be your friends. And uh, yeah, keep dancing, keep taking care of each other, keep being good to each other. Sean and I are gonna film a bunch of trick tips and uh, videos and maybe a contest run. I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, good to see him. Good to see all y'all. And we will see you hopefully 
next weekend. Actually, we'll see you next weekend for another video. So keep dancing, everybody.